This view uh, from the uh, familiar cross-haired engineering camera on the uh, Soyuz vehicle, along with other engineering data overlay, as we stand by for physical separation of the Soyuz TMA-16M spacecraft from the International Space Station. So the mechanical contact indicator is not illuminated anymore. So please report on upon this separation uh, the status of the uh, docking interface surface. Okay, copy Moscow. Okay. Undocking confirmed. Put SSVP mode in work, and we confirm separation. So, goodbye station. We are in the sunrise, and... Uh, we're so illuminated that I can hardly see anything. Slava, do you copy? We do copy. Undocking occurring right on time at 4.29 p.m. So, Central. Uh, nothing but blackness, but... Uh, While the International uh, Space Station so flew 250 yeah. statute miles over yeah. eastern Mongolia. Uh, are the guys taking pictures? Right, so all that do copy, are you going to be taking pictures? Right. I understand. So maybe it makes sense to deactivate the floodlight. No, I don't think it's going to change anything, but the um, headlight is going to turn on right now. So, okay, we have deactivated the floodlight. Is it any better? Because I can't really see anything. All right, that's good. We did not let you down. And I don't think there will be any choice left for you guys. The Soyuz uh, continues uh, to back away as we stand by uh, for a separation burn of eight seconds in duration. What are you that will increase the opening rate uh, between the Soyuz and the International I Space Station. I can't really respond, and uh, I can't really Moscow take Station a good picture. Expedition 45 officially <laughs> underway at the moment of undocking that occurred uh, just two minutes ago. Scott Kelly, uh, the Expedition 45 commander, along with his crewmates, Mikhail Kornienko, Sergei Volkov, Alec Kononenko, Chell Lindgren, and Kamiya Yui. Right, we confirm that we have DPO activation and we are separating and the DPO thrusters have been firing for 8 seconds. We copy and we confirm that you sent the command and the command has gone through. Okay, and we're setting in the inhibit. Copy. All right, we are deactivating SSVP. We are sending the power supply. Copy. The uh, separation burn of eight seconds uh, from the Soyuz thrusters now complete and good. The Soyuz uh, beginning to increase its opening rate from the International Space Station and will drift uh, to a point uh, 
some 12 kilometers away from the International Space Station for the deorbit burn that will occur about 2 hours and 25 minutes from now at 6.59 and 7 seconds p.m. Central Time. Moscow, how do you copy us? We copy you. Please stand by one. Inaudible. So this is inaudible. Can we deactivate it? Yes. You have our go to deactivate it. This view uh, from uh, an engineering camera on the outside of the Soyuz vehicle uh, before we passed out of range of Russian ground stations just now, uh, indicating uh, all data is good on the Soyuz vehicle. A uh, smooth undocking for Gennady Padalka, Andreas Mogensen of the European Space Agency, the first Dane ever to fly in space, and Aydin Aimbatov, uh, the Kazakh cosmonaut, only the third Kazakh space flyer in history. That multinational crew now backing away from the space station, heading for a point uh, about 12 kilometers away from the complex for a deorbit burn at uh, 6.59 p.m. Central Time that will begin the road home uh, and an uh, hour-long descent back into the Earth's atmosphere, targeting a landing point on the steppe of Kazakhstan for a touchdown at 7.51 and 20 seconds p.m. Central Time. 6.51 and 20 seconds a.m. Kazakhstan time on Saturday, about two and a half minutes before uh, sunrise. As you can see, now flying free of the International Space Station, having undocked on time just a few minutes ago at uh, 4.29 p.m. Central Time. This uh, view from high-definition cameras on the station uh, showing uh, the Soyuz TMA-16M that was launched back on March 28th to carry uh, Padalka and the one-year crew members, Scott Kelly and Mikhail Kornienko, to the International Space Station, now flying at the apex of an orbit uh, that will carry it uh, from northwest to southeast across uh, the northern Pacific Ocean at an altitude of 250 statute miles, uh, this Soyuz spacecraft. Uh, moving to a point now uh, that will ultimately uh, reach about 12 kilometers away from the station for the deorbit burn, a 4-minute, 42-second engine firing that will initiate at 6.59 and 7 seconds p.m. Central Time to uh, slow the Soyuz down by 128 meters per second, enabling it uh, to begin its uh, descent out of orbit into the Earth's atmosphere and a landing on the steppe of Kazakhstan at uh, 7.51 p.m. Central Time this evening. And a good view of the uh, departing Soyuz vehicle with Padalka, Mogensen, and Imbatov on board. You uh, can see in this view uh, on the right side of your screen two other Russian vehicles, one a Progress resupply craft and the other a, uh, th one of the other Soyuz vehicles, now two left at the station. The one in view uh, belongs to uh, Kononenko. Uh, Lindgren and Yui, 
who will uh, themselves depart the station on December 22nd, that's the Soyuz TMA-17M vehicle, for their own landing on the steppe of Kazakhstan. But a good view of the departing Soyuz uh, that is now just hours away, just three hours, ten minutes away from touching down on the steppe of Kazakhstan, some 90 miles to the southeast of the remote town of, of Jezkazgan. Again, this view of the uh, Soyuz spacecraft just minutes after it undocked uh, from the International Space Station as it uh, backed further and further away from the International Outpost with the six crew members left on board of Kelly, Kornienko, Volkov, Yui, Lindgren, and Kononenko. The new Expedition 45 crew, Expedition 45, officially underway at the time of undocking that occurred at 4.29 p.m. Central Time this afternoon. And there's our video of uh, the Soyuz TMA. 16M descending uh, as advertised under its main parachute eight and a half minutes prior to touchdown as sunrise breaks uh, over the landing site uh, 90 miles to the southeast of Jezkazgan. So how is the gravity? How does the gravity feel, guys? Unintelligible. So everything's nominal, guys? You're ready? Almost unintelligible. The conversation between the core members. The uh, intermittent beeping that you hear, that's the uh, radio beacon from the Soyuz spacecraft. And as you can see, uh, descending gently toward its landing site. Seven minutes we until touchdown, everything in great shape. We passed, we just passed 350 mark. Do you copy us? Can you see us? Can you, do you copy us? We open the guns there. Do you copy us? We do not copy you. We do not copy you, ground. Less than five minutes before landing, Gennady Padalka continuing uh, to report back to the search and recovery forces. Uh, the uh, instrumentation on board uh, suggesting uh, their altitude towards touchdown as the Soyuz descends under its main parachute for an on-time and what apparently will be a bullseye landing to the southeast of the town of Jezkazgan. Can you give us your altitude? It's 2,300. And sounds good, guys. And yeah, we're going to give you the control altitude. And then after that, how copy? When we need it. All right, so what's your altitude? We just uh, passed 2,000, and we, ha we are at 1,900. 
How are you feeling, guys? Good. Feel good. Do you, do you feel how heavy it actually feels on the ground? Or you haven't been long long enough to feel it? No, we'll feel a little bit. We just passed, we just passed 1800 mark. How copious? 1500, we are approaching 1500. Launched uh, atop a Soyuz booster on March 28th to carry the one-year crew members Scott Kelly and Mikhail Kornienko to the International Space Station. Gennady Padalka, who rode uphill in the Soyuz TMA-16M, now just uh, two and a half minutes away from ending his fifth mission into space and 168 days in space along with uh, Andreas Mogensen of the European Space Agency and Aydin Einbetov of the Kazakh Space Agency, who are wrapping up 10 days in space, 8 days aboard the International Space Station, the TMA-16M descending toward its landing site under uh, a fully reefed main parachute in grid shape. On scene, in a racetrack pattern around the landing zone as we stand by for touchdown. 350 meters. How many? Something? Did you say 200? And there you see touchdown, the soft landing engines uh, firing uh, right on schedule. Touchdown uh, confirmed at 7.51 and 36 seconds p.m. Central Time. 7.51 and 36 seconds p.m. Central Time, 6.51 and 36 seconds a.m. Kazakhstan time on Saturday morning. The mission at an end for Gennady Padalka at 168 days bringing home with him the two short-duration crew members, Andreas Mogensen and Aydin Einbetov, having completed 10 days in space, eight days aboard the International Space Station. Gennady Padalka, 879 days in space on his five flights, and on the front board of the Russian Mission Control Center, the Russian words, Yest Posatka, the Russian words for, they've landed. All of uh, the dynamic events associated with uh, this homecoming for Gennady Padalka, Andreas Mogensen, and Aydin Einbetov uh, went by the book. Hatches uh, were closed uh, between uh, the Soyuz and the station at uh, 1.17 p.m. Central Time. That led uh, to the undocking of the Soyuz from the aft port of the Zvezda service module at 4.29 p.m. Central Time. The uh, Soyuz executed a separation burn, moved uh, to a distance of 12 kilometers away uh, from uh, the International Space Station for the deorbit burn. At 6.59 p.m. Central Time, a 4-minute, 42-second retrograde maneuver that enabled the Soyuz to begin its descent back to Earth, where it landed at 7.51 and 36 seconds p.m. Central Time, just about uh, 9 or 10 minutes ago. This is Mission Control Houston. It has been about uh, 13 minutes since the Soyuz uh, spacecraft landed uh, on the steppe of Kazakhstan uh, with Gennady Padalka, Andreas Mogensen, and Aydin Einbetov on board. Uh, as you can see, and not unexpected, uh, the Soyuz landed uh, on its side or was pulled over onto its side uh, 
under the force of its uh, main parachute on a fairly windy morning at the landing site. Nonetheless, uh, the landing was on time, and now you can see uh, search and recovery personnel uh, beginning uh, to work uh, toward the extraction of the crew. Uh, European Space Agency personnel are also on scene uh, to assist uh, with the uh, Russian uh, Rosaviatsa search and recovery forces and uh, technical personnel from uh, RSC Energia. It uh, will take just a few minutes uh, for the uh, crew members to be extracted. Uh, Gennady Padalka, the Soyuz commander, uh, will be first out of the Soyuz if form holds. Since he is in the center seat, uh, freeing up more room for Mogensen and Einbatov to be extracted uh, after he is out of the spacecraft. And uh, as advertised, Gennady Padalka, the world's most experienced space traveler, first out of the Soyuz capsule, wrapping up 168 days in space uh, during expeditions 43 and 44, and uh, a total of 879 days in space on five flights, more than two months more than the former record holder, Sergei Krikalov. <laughs> Gennady Padalka, ever the cool customer, sipping some tea uh, right after sunrise uh, at the landing site in Kazakhstan. And uh, second out uh, is native Kazakh uh, cosmonaut uh, Aydin Anbatov, having landed not far from his uh, hometown on native soil, soon to be feeded uh, at a reception by the Kazakh president in Astana a few hours from now. 
Давайте, давайте всем работать. Можем назад. Руки в руки. Отойдите в сторону, в сторону, в сторону. Отойдите в сторону, в сторону. Отойдите в сторону. Так, если сейчас не будет здесь порядка, я сейчас мешаю. Немножко пробыл. Отойдите, вы поднимаете. Все ушли, ушли. Ушли, ушли. Молодец. Я вам мешаю, что работа не за ленту. Так, давление слишком. А раньше нам от всякие одевали. And uh, the RSC Energia personnel now extracting Andreas Mogensen of the European Space Agency, the first Dane to fly in space. All three crew members now out of the uh, Soyuz spacecraft, a mere 25 minutes after touchdown. Mogensen, uh, who along with Einbatov spent eight days on board the International Space Station, ten days in space overall since their launch from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Uh, he was uh, knee-deep in scientific research in the Columbus module of the International Space Station during his duration on, on board. Now returning uh, to a triumphant uh, return. Everything looking good at the landing site southeast of Jezkazgan. the uh, returned crew members uh, looking in good shape uh, sampling some fresh fruit at the landing site again uh, having a few minutes uh, to get their land legs back uh, before they are carried into a nearby inflatable medical tent uh, to receive initial medical exams and to doff their Sokol launch and entry suits.
Сейчас скажу. Привет, Салим. Сереж, пусть товар просит, пускай мы аппарат показать. Молодец. Молодец. О, еще забыл. Ну ладно, там сейчас он будет. On the right uh, side of your screen is uh, Yuri Lonchakov, who is the head of the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center, a uh, veteran cosmonaut uh, in his own right, who also flew on a space shuttle mission uh, to the International Space Station. Отходим, 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 отходим. Вы для себя его потом снимете, все. У меня перепишите. And now the crew members are being brought one by one in their uh, comfortable chairs into the inflatable medical tent nearby. А так он снимает такой? А что красный? Машина батарейка была? Очень похоже на сельскую батарейку. This is Mission Control Houston. The uh, three crew members who uh, returned home for a uh, bullseye landing on the steppe of Kazakhstan in the Soyuz TMA-16M spacecraft are all inside uh, a nearby inflatable medical tent uh, on that uh, remote site uh, southeast of the town of Jezkazgan, having uh, completed a flawless descent uh, back to Earth and a landing just 42 minutes ago at 7.51 p.m. Central Time, 6.51 a.m. Kazakhstan time on Saturday morning. So with the crew back home on Earth safely, Gennady Padalka having uh, concluded 168 days in space on this his fifth flight away from the planet and a total of 879 days in space overall, more than any other human being. And with European Space Agency astronaut Andreas Mogensen of Denmark and Kazakh cosmonaut Aydin Aimbatov having returned to Earth after 10 days in space, eight days aboard the International Space Station. Uh, all three crew members uh, appearing hale and hearty. Uh, they will undergo uh, medical tests before they fly in individual Russian Mi-8 helicopters to the Kazakh capital of Astana for a welcoming ceremony before they split off with Padalka and Aimbatov returning to Star City, Russia, while Mogensen flies on an ESA plane back to the European Astronaut Center in Cologne. So with that, uh, we'll wrap up our coverage uh, for uh, this evening's activities. Uh, the Soyuz back safely on Earth, left on board the International Space Station, the normal complement of six crew members under the command of NASA's Scott Kelly, as Expedition 45 now officially underway uh, to continue uh, their complement of research and uh, other activities on board that will uh, resume on Monday after the crew has a well-deserved weekend of off-duty time. Uh, one programming note uh, on Monday, September 14th, 
Space Station Live uh, will recap all of the activities of tonight's uh, return to Earth of Padalka, Imbatov, and Mogensen, as well as get you caught up on other activities on board the Orbital Laboratory. Again, Space Station Live to air on NASA television Monday at 10 a.m. Central Time, 11 a.m. Eastern Time. For now, Soyuz TMA-16M, Padalka, Imbatov, and Mogensen back home safely on Earth. We wish you a great weekend. Hope you enjoyed our coverage, and for now, this is Mission Control Houston.